بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نومبر 24 کوشچن پیپر 31 دس از دی پریکٹیکل ایگزام اینڈ وی ار گوئنگ ٹو ڈو ا کوشچن 2 which i am going to explain in this video we have done question 1 in a previous video video now we are going to discuss question number 2 in this video j1 is a slide of a stain transfer section through a leaf now this could be any slide which cambridge will send and this is not something which we can generate from here in our centers in pakistan or in any other country now draw a large plan drawing of the region so they have told you that it's a leaf sometimes they don't tell you that even and draw a large plan drawing of the region of the leaf on j1 indicated by the shaded area in figure 2.1 so this probably is the whole leaf and you only have to draw the plan drawing of this area some of you will draw the whole leaf i know it i'm 100% because i know i'm dealing with uh, the most amazing generation of the entire centuries so it is uh, you'll draw the whole leaf many of you will do that not only a few but many of you will do that but it's saying no it says draw large plan drawing of the region of the leaf on j1 as indicated by shaded area in figure 2.1 but of course we didn't see figure 2.1 really miss i didn't see figure 2.1 miss miss was was not written there when i check the paper and i tell the student i say oh i didn't read this and i said i wish i could i will not complete the sentence so use one rule label line and label to identify the lower epidermis so lower epidermis will be the lower part so it will be this part that they are talking about so you have to you have to label the lower part so you have to draw only this much area from the of course the whole leaf was given to you and i'm just going to show you a few slides of the of the whole leaf and then you can figure it out how you're going to do the plan drawing now remember this the plan drawing is you know when this finishes here and then you see where is the marks written the marks are written here so you must use this entire space so you must draw uh, a plan drawing of the whole thing and then of course you draw the epidermis and then you draw and then you see the proportion and then you draw this dip and then you finish it off here and then you draw the palisade and then of course you see a big vascular bundle here and then of course there are sort of three areas one would be the xylem leaf upper xylem that's why the mnemonic is l u x so the xylem is going to be here now please remember no cells and i see students drawing every cell like this and i wish i could do something but i can't and that upsets me a lot because i feel maybe i haven't taught it to you so then you see this uh, the palisade mesophyll and then you see the spongy mesophyll so you just have to draw a plan of the tissues in a plan drawing you, know, you have to do the plan of the tissues you don't show each and every cell you never never draw each and every cell so i'm going to remove this bracket but what i meant is that you use nearly 3 fourths of the available space given to you you use the available space you don't draw a teeny weeny diagram here just like this and you say oh well this is the diagram no 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 this would be you would lose a mark here this is a very good diagram it is from your book this is the slide and as we said this area had to be drawn so this is the plan drawing and you can see these lines here upper epidermis and then this is of course the lower epidermis and then this is whole the mid rib and then this is the cuticle and then the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll and the rest of it of course you can see here that the xylem the phloem the, that's all what i would talk about and this is the whole vascular bundle which was labeled like this so you can see this is a diagram which i have taken from the the cambridge book which is all, which has been prescribed for your a level biology which a very few percentage of students study but uh, there are e books for it and you can always get those if you don't want to buy the actual book which may be costly for some of the students so this is the plan drawing that you needed to draw and this is the plan drawing of a leaf now how would i an examiner mark this uh, now there are five points given to me in the mark scheme it says uses most of the available space and no shading you don't do the shading part so no shading uh, you got a mark for that then draws the correct region of the leaf and no cells included you didn't draw any cells you got another mark 
draws the correct proportion of palisade layer in proportion to the depth of the leaf. So this, the palisade was say one centimeter. So then the whole of it was say about, the rest of it was about five times bigger than this. So the proportion has to be correct. Then draw area under the vascular bundle or subdivision of the vascular bundle. So there was probably in the slide, uh, there was a subdivision of the vascular bundle and you had to draw this. And then the label line to the, then of course you would do the lower epidermis also with a double line. And then you would label this lower epidermis. So there's one mark for this. So I've given you all the five mark scheme points. Uses most of the available space and no shading. Draws the correct region of the leaf and no cells included. Draws the correct proportion of the palisade layer in proportion to the depth of the leaf. Was it one fifth? Was it one fourth? Or was it even less than that? Draws area around the vascular, uh, under the vascular bundle or subdivision. So there was probably another little sort of a diagram here. So there was a subdivision of the vascular bundle. Label line and label to the lower epidermis. So this is the five marks that you had to get you the five. I'm sure most of you would get that five. At least my students would get that five. I'm that confident. Now coming to part two of the question, observe the xylem vessel elements in the leaf on J1. So this is the slide which Cambridge has sent you. Select a line of four adjacent xylem vessel elements. Each xylem vessel element must touch at least one other xylem vessel element. Make a large drawing of this line of four xylem vessel elements. Use one rule label line and label to identify the wall of one xylem vessel element. So you have to draw the wall, you have to label the wall of one xylem vessel element, one ruled label line. So it means something. Now, as you can see, I have given you a picture of a slide which has it all labeled very well. There's upper xylem, there is upper epidermis, xylem, colon chyma, stoma, and uh, phloem. And phlo now, it says in the question that uh, you had to do a row of xylem vessels. So now, if you look at it, uh, I'm going to try and find you four xylem vessels. And there, of course, you can do this row. And there are three, of course, here, and there's one here. Or you can do another one here. This one is a fourth one here, this one. So I'll just rub off all the markers, and then you can see. So a row of xylem vessels, and they must touch one another. So now if you look at this diagram, which I've again taken from your book, these are three, three xylem, one, two, three. Number one, they're not all the same size. And then you see there are two lines. There are two lines which are enclosing the wall. So one, you do it like this, you connect it. And then you have another line. So this would be the wall of the xylem vessel, right? And then it is connected. Now it is connected to another xylem vessel. And then you, of course, you connect it here. But then you have to also draw another line inside because the cell, the wall of the xylem vessel, which is of course the cell wall is. So where the three, where the two xylem vessel meet, there are three lines, one, two, and three. But here there are only two on this side because that's not just meeting another xylem vessel. So this is the rule that we will draw three lines when we are showing where one xylem vessel meets another one. You can see it here also. This is one, and then this is the second, and then this is the third. So you always show the xylem whenever you show two plant cells connecting with each other. Where they connect, you show three lines. That is the rule that we follow. So here you would draw the four xylem vessels. So they're usually, you know, they are usually very, uh, hexagonal and you have to be careful you can't be doing this like what I've done here you can't make this mistake so this is how you would draw this would be four xylem vessels and no mistake like this one here right and then you draw the two lines and the three lines I'll just complete that for you 
So you can see, I mean, we've drawn this large drawing of four xylem vessels each i must add at least one other so it does t touch one other xylem vessel some of them like this one is touching this one and this one but of course you don't have to do that always just has to touch one sometimes it is you know must touch two then you must draw it in that manner now how was i going to mark this you know as you can see here uh, this was for five marks this was for five marks, and how were you? How was I going to give you the five marks? Well, the first part, part is use most of the available space and lines continuous, thin, and sharp. Use most of the available space, lines continuous, thin, and sharp. So you have to have a sharpened pencil for this. Then uh, the next point was draws only four xylem vessels some of you might have drawn six or seven or eight because you're of course the very brilliant generation beautiful brain fog generation bf draws only four xylem vessel elements and each vessel touches at least one other vessel then two lines around each vessel and three lines where the cells touch three lines where the cells touch Three lines where the cells touch. It draws correct shape of cells with four or five sides. Label line and label to the wall of one xylem vessel element. So I hope everybody understands this. And please, if you don't, please listen to the video again. Pause it and listen to it again. I don't want you making these mistakes. Oh, coming to the B part of the question, figure 2.2. This is figure 2.2. Is a photomicrograph a transfer session through a different leaf from J1? Identify three observable differences other than color between the section on J1 and section. So color, you're not going to talk about the color, but you can see three observable differences in uh, table. So you have to compare, you have to do it in this table in 12.2.1. So you have to compare the slide J1 and figure 2.2 now i'll try to find a slide which is uh, which was similar to the cambridge slide i'm not sure what the slide was but i'll try to find a slide so that you can do a comparison about these two well let's assume that uh, this was the slide from cambridge i'm saying let's assume i'm not sure what the slide was but say this was the slide from cambridge now you've been asked to do a comparison so this would be uh, slide J1, which came from Cambridge, and you have to compare them. Now, if you look at it, thickness of the palisade layer. Now, here the palisade layer is very, very indistinct. We can't really make much out of it. This is probably the palisade layer, which is not very clear. Now, here the palisade layer is very thick. The palisade layer is very clearly quite thick. This is the whole palisade layer from here to here. So is the palisade layer. So we say thickness of the palisade layer in J1 was thick and in figure 2.2 was thin. Then endodermis not visible. Now here you can see there is this distinct endodermis. This whole thing, let me color it red for you. This is a very distinct endodermis like you find it in the roots. So this is the endodermis. So endodermis is not visible here. There's no endodermis here. There's no endodermis here, not visible. Here it is present and is very distinct, right? Then shape of the vascular bundle. Here the shape of the vascular bundle is circular like this here. But here it is it is sort of double. There is one part here and then there's a part here. So we say shape of the vascular bundle here, we say it is circular. And here we say it is double, two regions. So here it is double and there are two regions. You see, you'll have to look at the slide from Cambridge and do a comparison with this. Then size of the midrib. Now you can see this is the this is the rest of it, and this is the midrib, which is of course very very big, as compared to that. The size of the midrib in J1. This is the whole one, and this is the midrib. It's smaller, just a little more than the 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 normal width of the leaf. So the midrib is smaller here. And here it is uh, much larger. You can see the midrib is very, very, and this is only this much. 
so it is larger mid rib i hope you know what mid rib is if not then google it so uh, the features and then you have the differences and i've given you all of that i've discussed this and i want you to look at it i want you to do, download the paper and do it yourself first and then watch these videos on it now coming to part 2 figure 2.3 shows a diagram of a stage micrometer that is being used to calibrate an eyepiece graticule the length of one division on the stage micrometer is 0.2 mm so 0.2 mm is equal to what is equal to 10 eyepiece graticules epg is eyepiece graticule so 0.2 mm is equal to 10 epg now everybody please concentrate because you see this is one division of the stage micrometer and this is 0.2 millimeter. This is what they're showing you. And the eyepiece graticule is 9200. So it's 10 eyepiece graticule units. Now figure two, use figure 2.3 to calculate the length of one eyepiece graticule unit. Show your working, include the unit in your answer. You see, you should be very careful in writing the units. The, you all forget writing the units. So point 10 eyepiece graticule units is equal to 0.2. You have to find out what is 1 because it says 1 eyepiece graticule. So 10 is equal to 0 0.2. 10 is equal to 0 0.2 to 1000 micrometer. You could have also kept it in millimeter and then you could have divided by 10. So you could write the answer both in millimeter and micrometer. I would have been fine with that, whatever you had done. So because it says in the mark scheme, uh, states 10 eyepiece graticule is 0 0.2 millimeter, then divide 0 0.2 by 10. 0 0.2 by 10 you divided by that and then correct answer and appro appropriate units either micrometer or millimeter either micrometer or millimeter so i mean i gave my answer in micrometer i always prefer to do it in micrometers so everybody must revise this one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter and one millimeter is equal to 1000 micrometer Then part three figure 2.4 shows the same eyepiece graticule and same lens is being used to measure the width of the section shown in figure 2.2. Look at it carefully. And then it says use your answer in B2 to calculate the actual width of the section shown in figure 2.4 and show your working. Actual width, what is the actual width? Now let's look at it, how many eyepiece graticules is it? Now you can look at it, it's a very simple, very basic, it was nearly, you know, you can see it here, it was nearly 85 and we started off with 10. So 85 minus 10 will be 75 eyepiece graticule units. And then what had you to do? So 75 multiplied by, what was it here? We had 20 micrometer. So you multiply it by 20 and actual width of the section. Now this was in micrometer. So you state the correct number of eyepiece graticule units across the width of the section and then shows this multiplied by the answer to B2. And this will give you the answer uh, of the width of the section. This is only for two marks. So 75 into 20 will be 1500 uh, micrometers would be the answer to this. There are only two marks for this. Now everybody should have got full marks in this part of the question. I don't understand if anybody would get this wrong and why would. Thank you and best of luck. And I hope you do well in the exams.